Hi everybody, welcome to the second part of the tutorials about converting this uh, shader toy shader into GHLPX code. So in the first part of this tutorial, so part one, we converted the GLSL shader toy code into GGLPX code uh, simply by using uh, GGLPX objects. Uh, now, if you follow the previous tutorial, there was actually an error. Let me show it to you. Basically, I didn't use the value of the time uh, in his uh, for loops iterations. So this is how the code was before. But you can see that we are not using we are not using the the z value sum to zero point to point zero seven on the on the second and the third iteration. We are just using it on the first iteration. So what we have to do is to get this part and to use the value of the time uh, plus 0 0.14. So this is the second iteration of the for loop. And we have to get it here. And this goes here. And then we have to do this another time to for the third iteration of the for loop. So this goes here, this goes here, because before they were all attached to the first iteration, while the correct way is to do it in this way. So now the code is uh, uh, perfectly correct. Now, in this part of the tutorial, we are going to recreate this algorithm in code box. So this can be useful to, if you want to have a, um, a clearer understanding uh, about the uh, code box works. I hope you will have a clearer understanding at the end of this uh, tutorial. But so yeah, I will try to recreate this code inside code box. So let's see what uh, we can do. First of all, we need uh, these two parameters, e time. So let's call this time and then resolution that uh, are two parameters that I'm sending from outside of the GGL peaks. Here I'm sending the resolution and here I'm sending the time. So also in the previous uh, GGL peaks, we used those two parameters using this uh, param object. So we have a parameter time and a parameter resolution. So let's actually copy this part in our second code box, in our second GGLPX. And so this is our resolution, which will be used to get the ratio of the X sides of the window and the Y sides. So let's start now to code the actual algorithm. We have the void main image. We don't have actually to write this function because the GGLPX is already contained inside this function, basically. So uh, frag color is actually our output one and frag coordinate is the cell, uh, the output of the cell object. So say that, let's see what we have here. We have a C, which is a back tree. So in code box, so in, in the gen language, we have to create it this, in this way. We cannot write back tree, this doesn't exist. So we just write a default, uh, an empty vector containing three zeros and call this C. Okay. Now let's see what else do we have. Let me reduce the size of this code box. Let's see what else do we have. Uh, float L and Z that are equal to time. So let's, let's create something like this. F which is equal to 0.0, .0. just to remember that this is, uh, oh no, sorry, this is called L. Let's set it to 0, 0.0. Just remember that this is a float. We could also just have wrote uh, 0, and this would have been, uh, could have also just written 0, and this would have been a float anyway, but let's write it explicitly so we remember that this is a float. And then Z, that is equal to our parameter time. So we can write it like this. Then we have the for loop. So let's write the for loop. We can write it almost exactly as it is in uh, the shader toy code, but we don't have to write the type of E because as you probably already understood, 
uh, JIT in the gen language, it's uh, type free, so you don't have to declare the type of the variables. So while three is less than three, e, uh, plus plus we cannot write, it's not allowed, it's actually an error inside gen, so we have to write plus equal one. Okay, so let's go on. So we have two uh, declaration of two vector two. One is uv, so let's declare it like this. And the second is p, which is equal to frog chord uh, x y divided our resolution. So we have to write it like this: uh, cell divided our uh, resolution. So R here is defined as the I resolution, which is a uh, default uh, value that uh, shader toy passes in the shader, but we can use our resolution parameters. So cell uh, divided our resolution. We cannot actually write it like this because um, the, the size of our image it's 800 by 800, but this is uh, not actually the same size of our window, so we cannot use uh, the resolution to divide our uh, our cell coordinates. So since the frac coordinate divided by the resolution will just uh, it's just a method to achieve normalized coordinates, we can just use the norm object inside uh, uh, that is a gen object and gives us the same result. Now let's see what we have. UV, UV is equal to P, is set equal to P, so now UV, let's write a comment, now UV is also equal to norm, and now let's see what we have. P uh, is minus equal to, 0.5, to 0 0.5, which means that the center is moved into the zero, and uh, with the now the coordinates goes to minus, uh, minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 on both directions. So let's let's do these two. So minus equal to 0 0.5. This will apply uh, this operation to both x and y of the normalized uh, vector coordinates vector. Now let's see p point x is multiplied equal. To the to the ratio, so our parameter ratio, our value ratio here. So let's actually write here ratio is equal to into because we uh, we need an in an in inside the code box to send in our ratio value. So since uh, uh, the the x coordinate of the p value uh, the p variable must be multiplied by the ratio we can write it like this so p uh, we cannot assign a value to to p to a single component of a vector inside gen we cannot do this this will be an error so we have to write something like this uh, p it's uh, multiplied equal to uh, let's see to a vec that has no, so we have to write it uh, like this. P is equal to uh, a vec that has uh, p point x multiplied by ratio, and then it has p point y. So we have to recreate the vector uh, from scratch, basically, and achieve the same result by multiplying the x by the ratio, which is what is going on on this line here. Okay, so let's see what we have next. Uh, z is plus equal to 0 0.7 so z is our time value is equal to our time value in the beginning so we set it here to plus equal 0 0.7 not 0 0.07 sorry then we have l which is set as the length of our p vector we can just write this uh, in the same way because it's uh, uh, it's the same syntax and then we have up uv uh, is plus equal to p. This we can almost write uh, just in the same way because it's p divided by l multiplied by the sine of z plus one uh, multiplied by the absolute value of sin l multiplied by nine minus z 
multiplied by two closed close as you can see uh, here the dots after the float points values are always written but we actually don't need to write them in JITGEN because everything is automatically a float okay so that was it uh, now the next line we cannot access uh, the single variable of a vector uh, we cannot assign a value to the single values of a vector as we saw before so we cannot write this line uh, like that what we have to write is uh, uh, yeah this is a bit uh, awkward to write uh, but we could write something like this so if e is equal to zero then we can do yeah we can write it in this way so let me think is this the best way in which we can write it yeah actually the best way that i could think of writing this is to use an if statement to simulate this uh, access in the vector using this um, array operator so let's do actually like this let's create three variables here so uh, like uh, c uh, c eins set it to zero c it's by let's set it to zero and c three let's set it to zero and then let's see if one is equal to zero then c uh, one is equal to uh, 0 0.01 divided by the length Oh no, let's actually make it in a more intelligent way. So let's make it like this. So let's create a temporary variable and let's assign it to this, uh, to this uh, operation here. So the modulus of UV1 uh, minus 0 0.5, close parenthesis. Okay. So if e is equal to 0, C, uh, C1 is equal to temp. We can also just write without the parentheses because it's if, if it's just one line, we can write the if statement without the these parentheses here. So then if e is equal to 1, then uh, C2 is equal to temp. And then if e is equal to 2 then c3 is equal to temp okay so that's how we can write it then let's close the for loop let's get out of the for loop and uh, let's write the, our final statement so out1 is equal to vec uh, c1 c2 c3 and then it puts the time as the i oh know this must be divided by length um by l so by our length so let's actually write it like this result it's equal to vec c1 c2 and c3 divided by length and then let's write this is e out one is equal to result Point, um, red result point green and result point blue and then one for the alpha and we should have oh there is an error what is ah yeah misses the back okay so this should be it let's touch it here let's connect uh, this to the let's pass this as an output and uh, we have to assign the parameter here and the res resolution and we have our our algorithm so our shader code inside uh code box so it was actually much easier than write it inside using gglpix objects was actually much more neat and uh clean so okay that was it i f i hope this uh, actually was uh, kind of interesting for you and uh, in the next part we will take a look at how to write this using ggl uh, glsl so by using 
the GGL slab object and we will write some GLSL code. If you want to know more about shaders, I made a super basic tutorial that uh, introduced shaders and I will put the link on the description of the video. So I encourage you to visit my website. So yeah, that was it uh, for the second tutorial. Uh, let's see you on the next one. Ciao guys.